know what it do, it's your boy J. Lou, and you are just in time for something new. All right, now in today's video, a lot of people have been asking me, how do I grow my beard longer? They've been seeing video every now and then when I decide to drop, and people have been noticing the beard gains. But one thing that you guys don't know is I actually trim my beard. I've stopped letting it grow extremely long because I think it's at a length that's pretty good. But in order to get to this point, this video is my number one secret when it comes to growing a longer beard. Now, before I start this video off, one thing I want to do is give, give a major salute to my sis, RG3. She uh, came out with these hats right here, as you guys can see. It says bag life on the hat, and y'all already know, I've been getting a whole bunch of money through trading uh, the foreign exchange market and things like that. And I figured I'd support the sis. So with that being said, if you guys are looking for one of these caps, all you gotta do is go to her Instagram. I'll make sure I put it down below in the description and I'll show it right here as well. But with that being said, let's get straight into the video. All right, now when it comes to growing a longer beard, the biggest secret is keeping your beard moisturized so it can be soft. A lot of people don't understand that not every product is made the same. And with that being said, uh, when it comes to my beard, you want something that will make your hair extremely soft and easier to detangle. A lot of people typically have the misunderstanding that just because I'm light skinned that I have a different type of, uh, of texture with, when it comes to my beard. But if you guys take a moment to consider when it comes to men, no matter what their ethnicity is, Typically, we all have a similar texture when it comes to our beard hair. Very curly and uh, very coarse in nature. So with that being said, this video will be able to help people from all different kind of backgrounds and things of that nature. But when it comes to your beard, what a lot of men don't know how to do is properly moisturize their beard. Now, I've made videos in the past in regards to the LOC method. I'll make sure I put that bad boy right above here that explains the science behind why you should use this method. Uh, and when it comes to your beard hair, when it comes to the different porosities, what I've noticed is my beard hair porosity is normal porosity. That means I can get away with doing almost anything to it. You know, so uh, when it's people typically with my channel, if you, if you guys been following my channel, you guys know I have low porosity hair. But when it comes to my beard, it's, it's normal porosity. So I can put any kind of product, whether it's oil, butter, or whatever cases into my beard, and it works great, but they don't all work the same. So when it comes to my secret, the secret is after I wash my beard, and when I say wash my beard, uh, for the rest of this video, I want you guys to keep in mind, a wash to me is shampooing and conditioning my beard. Now, that doesn't mean I wash my beard every single day. Some days I would just simply rinse my beard off because there's no point in washing. Just like you can't wash your hair every single day because it strips away the natural oils and things of that nature, you don't want to do that to your beard because a lot of people don't know that that prevents their beard from growing longer. So with that being said, whenever I wash my beard, the first thing I'm trying to do is apply a leave-in conditioner. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking me what's the best leave-in conditioner to use since Shea Moisture got rid of their low porosity leave-in conditioner line. Uh, but what I recommend highly is this brand right here. Now, this isn't a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid to mention this. But this brand right here, Myel, uh, they have a very dope product line across the board. Whether if you get this one, they also have different types uh, of different uh, leave-in conditioners different types of shampoos and things of that nature. To me, in my opinion, they are better than Shea Moisture. Uh, but with that being said, those are the brands that you wanna look for when it comes to a leave-in conditioner. They are pricey, but at the end of the day, uh, that's just what it is. A lot of people ask me what I use, and you guys know now. Now, the next part that you're gonna have to use is an oil. Now, when it comes to my oil, you guys already know I created my own oil. And honestly, I would have never created a product unless I could make something that was better than what was already on the market. You know what I'm saying? So with Texas Tea, I haven't gone through and, and given a, a, a full product description of it. But the biggest thing about my oil is I use the five lightest ingredients on the market as well as the best in regards to the categories that they can offer your hair. So you can get something that easily penetrates your hair strand as well as 
goes back to my number one secret, making your hair softer so it's easier to detangle. So with that being said, I'm gonna give y'all a demonstration. I have not washed my beard, I have not put any products in my beard for like the last three days, maybe even longer than that. And people, like I said, people typically think that just because I'm light skinned, my hair is, it, 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 you can comb it or whatever. But I'm gonna show you guys, if I take the long tooth portion of the comb and I try to comb through my beard, you probably, you guys can probably hear it. Just check this out right quick. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see. As you can see like that, it is not easy to comb through my beard when it is dry, as well as when I do not have products in my beard. It gets very curly, very detangled, and it's, it's hard to use a comb. Even on the wide tooth portion of the comb, it's hard to use the wide tooth portion of the comb to be able to comb through my beard. Now, most people would never even attempt to use the teaser portion when combing their beard. But this is the main reason why I told you guys I made the oil that I made. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take a washcloth, you want to heat it up, and then we're going to get into the process. So you simply just grab a washcloth like this, run it underneath some hot water. All right, now once you got your washcloth warm, you just simply rub it through your beard. You can either do this or, like I said, when you're taking your shower, you shampoo and condition your hair while you're in the shower, and uh, that way you can wash it while you're in the shower. But if you don't wanna, like let's say you didn't take a shower or whatever the case is and your beard is just dry, this is just the route that you can take to uh, moisturize it and make it a lot softer uh, in order for it to be easier to detangle. So you just basically run it through your beard just like this. Now you want to make sure all of your beard gets moisturized from the towel in and of itself. So go through your finger with your fingers and just try to feel if any part of your beard is still dry. If so, run the washcloth underneath hot water again and do the same process until all of your beard hair is saturated with water. Now for video purposes, I actually washed my beard last night, but I didn't put any conditioner or leave-in conditioner in my beard uh, because shampoo strips, strips your beard completely dry of any kind of uh, natural oils or whatever. So now that my beard is saturated and clean, the first thing I wanna do is take my leave-in conditioner and put enough into my hand that will be able to coat all of my beard hair. So I typically do two pumps, and as you guys can see, it's about that much. And you wanna make sure you get an even distribution through your hand. And then once it's evenly coated on your hands, you simply just pat it onto your beard on the front portion of your beard, but you can't forget about the under portion of your beard. A lot of people typically forget about the under portion of their beards. So once you get it on the, on the under portion, you just simply glide it through like this and try to distribute it with your hands first. Now on this step, keep in mind, you're not trying to detangle your beard with your fingers. It may be a little bit more softer because of the leave-in conditioner, but a leave-in conditioner or even a moisturizer by itself is not the best thing to use in it when it comes to detangling your beard hair or, or your hair just in general. So. Whenever you saw me doing this, I wasn't trying to detangle my beard. What I was trying to do was apply the leave-in conditioner to my skin on my face because you can't forget about your skin. Your skin is the place where all the nutrients are stored. So whenever your beard gets dry, it'll go to your face and try to absorb those nutrients. So what I try to do is I try to make sure I apply the leave-in conditioner to my beard hair, but also to my face. Because one thing you probably notice, if your beard gets dry, your face gets hella itchy. With that being said, after you're done with that, uh, you wanna use a comb, and, but make sure you wash your hands, get the leave-in conditioner off your hands first because you don't wanna have product on your hands. Now, like I told you guys before, when it comes to combing with a beard, uh, always use the wide tooth portion of the comb. This is a carbon comb. I'll make sure I leave a link in the description of where you can find this bad boy. Carbon combs are amazing because just like wooden combs, they have an anti-static property to them. So therefore, they don't snag and pull your hair as much as a plastic comb would because 
plastic combs generate the static electricity and it just makes it to where it snags your hair, it pulls your hair out. When you're trying to grow a beard, there's no point in snagging your hairs out. So I highly recommend using carbon combs if you cannot find wooden combs. So with that being said, start off with the Y2 portion of the comb. And just like I showed you guys in the beginning, I could not comb through my beard without pulling my hair out. Let me show you guys with the leave-in conditioner, the results of it, and you'll be, you guys be the judge. So you just take the comb. When you start with the combing process right now, like I said, leave-in detangling moisturizers do not make it the easiest to be able to uh, detangle your hair. So while I'm combing, what I'm doing is kind of picking it out with that motion until I can comb all the way through. So I start off at the top, I pick it out, and then pick it out while I'm working myself down. And then once I get it to the level to where I picked it all the way out from the bottom, then I can comb it all the way through from the root to the ends. Now the thing, the most important thing when it comes to growing a longer beard, many people neglect the bottom portion of their beard. So the same thing that you wanna do is you wanna use that pick out motion to detangle the under portion of your beard uh, but the thing that you'll notice is the under portion of your beard is the most detangled, you know? So you definitely want to take time. You do not want to pull any hairs out. If you feel, if it feels like uh, it's not as easy to do, skip the step. You don't really have to detangle the underneath, the under portion of your beard if you haven't applied the oil. So with that being said, the next thing we're going to do in the process like I always do with all my videos, I try to make things simple, but I, did, I go through and describe every single step as detailed as possible. So we're gonna take the Texas T, and what I always do, depending on your beard length, since my beard is very long, I can take a full dropper size to be able to apply it and distribute it all throughout my beard, so that's what I'm gonna do. So basically take, as you can see, a full dropper size is about that much. So let me put this down. And then you just apply it into your hands just like this. Evenly distribute it. And once you got it evenly distributed, the same process that we did before, you wanna tap the front portion of your beard. Man, I'm telling you, bro, like, one of the reasons why I made the oil was because I got tired of beard oil smelling like burnt tires, dog. And when it comes to the oil, because you can choose whatever flavor you want to smell like, it makes it a lot better when you're trying to grow your beard out. But at the same time, make sure you don't forget the under portion of your beard and just rub your hands underneath just like this. In that same motion I told you guys, use your fingertips and basically instead of doing like a scalp massage, you want to stimulate your, your the, the skin on your face and make sure that the oil is distributed on your face as well. Alright, now once you've applied the oil, what you want to do is make sure you wash your hands with soap uh, because at the end of the day, uh, with leave-in conditioner, you can typically rinse it off with just water, but with oils, you need to use soap to be able to wash it all the way off. All right, now the most important step is already done. The secret is by using the LOC method, and it really boils down to the products. I'm not making this video so you guys buy my oil, but after all the years of me testing other people products and different oils and things of that nature, what I saw was there was a gap where people were missing out on one, one thing. They kept focusing on shine. They kept focusing on uh, all this other stuff, but nobody was focusing on detangling your hair. At the end of the day, the, the biggest key to Texas tea is the fact that it softens your hair to be able to detangle it. I put that on the website. I, I try to break that down, but I wanted to make this video to highlight this benefit because with most products, you wouldn't be able to use the teaser portion of the comb to comb through your beard. But what I'm about to show you guys is after you put the tea in and you let it marinate, all you have to do is simply take a wide tooth portion of the comb first and then comb through your beard and detangle it. And then I'm gonna show you guys. So just check this out. All right, 
point. Now, as a black man, most people would not even consider using the teaser portion to comb through your beard. But as you guys have seen so far, I've already detangled my beard with uh, the Y2 portion of the comb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the teaser portion and show you the reason why my oil is better than any other oils that I've ever used in the past. So with that being said, let's get into it. So I'll take the teaser portion just like this. And as you guys can see, I can easily comb through my beard with minimal snags using the teaser portion of the comb. Now, the biggest thing and the biggest test, the reason why I knew it was better than the other oils, most products will allow you probably to be able to comb through the front and it may snag your hair every now and then. But whenever I was able to comb underneath my beard, that was the game changer for me. So let me show y'all exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so now I'm gonna take the teaser portion of the comb and comb underneath my beard. And what you guys are gonna see is, it's minimal snags, but at the same time, this is the most important, this is the secret in regards to growing a longer beard. All right, now the reason why this is so important is because when it comes to growing a longer beard, your beard naturally produces sebum, just the same way your scalp does. That's the natural oil that your body produces. If your hair is detangled or curled up, it makes it very difficult for that sebum to travel, to travel from the root to the end of your beard hair. The more detangled your beard is, then the, the better and the easier the natural sebum which your body produces can travel from the root to the ends of your beard. Because of that, it'll allow your hair to have the nutrients on the inner portion of your hair strand. Typically when we apply products, products are to protect the, the outer portion of the, of the hair strands or whatever we're applying to because once the hair grows out of your scalp or out of your face, it dies. And from that step on, what you're trying to do is preserve the health of the hair strand. So the products that we use really only treat the outer portion of, uh, of the hair strand. What you want to do is make sure that it, it, you make it easier for the natural sebum to travel from the root all the way to the end of your hair. Now, one thing I want to say is, you do not have to use combs that are this thin when it comes to the teeth. Even though this is the Y2 portion of the comb and this is the teaser portion, I only use this for the demonstrations of this video. It is not recommended to do this. But the reality is when it comes down to detangling something, it's just like the same concept of trying to uh, polish a wood surface. People, most people don't know, but whenever people try to order a table, wood is not smooth naturally. So when they try to finish the wood off, what they do is they start off with higher sizes of pebbles that they use to grind the wood down and smoothen it out. And then they decrease the size of the pebbles until they get to a very small size of the, of the pebbles to smooth in and finish the wood surface out. So the same theory applies when it comes to detangling. You always want to start off with a wider comb. You can even start off with something wider than this to pick your beard hair out. And then whenever it's picked out, you can use the wide tooth portion of the comb to detangle it. If you really want to make it extremely detangled, then you can use the teaser portion of the comb. Now, the reason why a lot of people avoid this is because of beard knots. I don't want to get into that. I'll make a video about that a little bit later. But beard knots can plague your beard growth as well. So with that being said, I don't want to uh, hold this video up. When it comes to growing a longer beard, that is my number one secret in regards to making it longer as well as healthier. And like I told you guys, I keep my beard trimmed at this point. I don't really allow it to grow to a certain point because sometimes when I'm eating, the, the beard will try to go in my mouth and I'm not about that, bro, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I don't wanna make this video too long, but I wanted to make this video to address the most important thing when it comes to growing a beard, which a lot of people overlook. 
Moisturizing is cool. If you add if you add a moisturizer that's only going to moisturize the outer portion of the beard, the inner moisture comes from the sebum, and the only way your hair can get the sebum is by making sure it's detangled as much as possible. If you like this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up and make sure you drop a comment because that lets YouTube know that more people need to see this video and it also helps the channel grow. If you learn something new, feel free to share it because that definitely helps the channel as well. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. It's your boy J. Lou. Salute. Hey, I'm the one who style waivers from Cap. I can do that. Every beat that I drop, be snap. I can do that. I'm known to give copycats the blues. I do they hate because they can't do what I do. I can do that. I'm the Don in the Southside legend. I can do that. I keep it real, no need for discretion. I can